So as you've probably heard by now, our friend, friend of the show, multiple time guest of the show, and just personal friend of Isaac and mine, uh, Jonathan Charks passed away over the weekend. And uh, he was a close friend. I mean, we would both call him close friends. We've been over to his house. We've met his family. We have had lots of long talks together. We've been part of small groups, Bible studies. We've been part of like each other's lives throughout the years. And, uh, and it hit us really hard. It's the reason why we didn't do a show yesterday. I know some of you were asking it. And this show is going to be a little different. This is not uh, this is not even locked on Mavs, really, at this point. But I know that we have pulled back the curtain a lot, let you guys into our lives. And, uh, and Charks is part of that. He's been part of the show a bunch of times. And uh, we just wanted to spend some time to talk about our friend and talk about what his life was about, talk about what he meant to us, probably some fun stories, um, but just honor his life and not not jump back into the Locked On Mavs thing yet. So if this doesn't interest you, totally understand. This is probably not the episode for you. We'll be back tomorrow fully. We'll be back uh, full Locked On Mavs, breaking down Slovenia, everything. Um, but it, it was just, it, it was hard. Um we, we've known for a while that Charks has been dealing with cancer, that he had been um, going through treatments, that he had had uh, ups and downs. It's not It was not like a linear like progression that he went through through this whole process. Uh, and it was brutal to watch his family, to watch him struggle through this, to think through this. Um, but there was such... There was such light and in like, like such encouragement I got from my own life and watching him go through this that I'm sure so many people have gotten. You've seen by now probably the messages from Bill Simmons and from pretty much everybody at the Ringer has talked about him on their shows at this point. My wife even listened to one of their like Game of Thrones podcasts. She's like they talked about sharks for like 10, 20 minutes today on on their show. Uh, his life is is reaching a lot of people and um, and that's because he was a guy that. Uh, his life was worth reaching a lot of people. He was just, he was an incredible person. Uh, I'm very honored to have known him. And uh, yeah, we just want to talk about him today and, and honor him on, on our show that he's been on before um, because he was so close to us. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been a tough past few days. And, um, you know, John, you know, I was just telling somebody uh, today, I was like, John used his platform um, so, so well. And, you know, he, um, over the weekend, um, you know, I, I started just jotting down different things, uh, about, about him, about our time together. And, um, God tweeted that out yesterday, but, you know, the first time I ever met John, uh, we was at a Mavs, Mavs game. And, uh, you know, all I knew about Jonathan Charks was he was a writer at the ringer and he had a monkey as an avatar as his Abby on Twitter. <laughs> And I didn't know what he looked like or anything. And, you know, this is, I don't know, five, six years ago, however yeah, a long. A while ago. And, um, and, and I remember being in this media scrum and there's this tall dude had a beanie on, you know, John's a tall guy and he had a flip phone. And I'm like, <laughs> the crap has a flip phone right. right now. And, and I remember him being in the scrum with it. And I remember making a joke to him about it. And I'm like, Wow, flip phone. I haven't seen one of those in, in a bit, whatever. And, you know, we, we chopped it up for a bit. And he's like, and, you know, John, if you've read what I, what I wrote, then I'm going to repeat some of this stuff. But he was like, yeah, yeah my, my name is John the Charks. And I was like, oh, wait, you're the guy with the, the monkey, Avi, like on, on Twitter. And, uh, and, you know, it just it started a unique friendship for me that, you know, I didn't. I didn't know a ton of people in Dallas. I just moved here. My wife and I've been here eight years. Um, I'd been here, I guess, a year or so um, until I got credentialed, you know, with the Mavs and started talking to John. And we instantly bonded over the fact that, you know, full disclosure, I'm going to talk a lot about my faith on this pod, but that, you know, I worked at a church, uh, still work at a church and I'm I'm a pastor and, he was like, bro, like, and we, we bonded over our faith in us being believers in a space that just being honest, that it's not that popular in the, in the sports media world to be a believer and, um, uh, be a Christian. And we just instantly bonded over that. And I never, I never, 
thought from that moment on how much we would bond over our faith in um and our families over the years uh a story about charks and kind of just what he means to me and in all this i i just hope that i don't know i, I hope that you you listening you get the just just a peek into our lives or a peek into um what jonathan charks meant and that his, his life will bring encouragement his life will bring um I don't know, maybe maybe courage to take a step in your life. Because for me, um, after, ooh, man, <laughs> after college, I uh, I had stepped away from my faith a little bit and I had just gotten sick of it. I had just gotten sick of the church stuff. I had gotten sick of the, uh, the way people talk, the way that they uh, say things, the way that they flippantly just tell you that like, Oh, your problems are gonna be fine because like Jesus has got you, right? And I'm I'm sure you listen to like, some people that think that same way. And so I just got sick of it. I just got sick of interacting with people like that, going to church, being part of that machine. And I just I walked away. It was a big part of my life. And uh, my dad's still a pastor back home. And um there are not many people in my life, Isaac obviously one of them, but there are not many people in my life that reached out and like reached a hand out to me. Um and, and like tried to draw me back in or just tried to meet me where I was without any judgment, without any, oh, well, why haven't you been to, you know, why haven't you found a, a church group to be part of? He just reached out to me and said, hey, why don't you come to my thing and, you know, see if you like it. If you don't, no pressure, nothing. And he didn't even really know me. Um, and uh, that's just the type of person he was. He was the type of person to see that somebody had a need or see that somebody needed to be reached out to. And he would just draw you in. And I saw that every time I went to one of his small groups, every time I interacted with him, um, I would just see that. And I would see his, um, the way that he brought people in with open arms. And it's the way that our religion that, that Isaac and I attest to, um, it's the way that we're taught to live. And he lived that out. Um, and his testimony, like his story of his faith is, is incredible. Um, the way that he, went from, you know, where he was, the house he grew up in. We grew up from completely different backgrounds. And um, he was still the one that, that, you know, that encouraged me, even though he didn't grow up in, in the church. He didn't grow up in faith. He found it himself. God found him uh, where he was. And so he used that in his life to reach out to others. And uh, man, it just, it meant a lot to me. And uh, yeah, I just, I've had a really hard time processing this, but I will always remember that and uh, take that in my life. He, he had a way of articulating um, really everything because he was so smart. He's such a gifted writer, um, obviously in the NBA world. Um, but he had this way of always just like bringing it back to like us. And I'm like, bro, like you're going through all of this stuff in your life, but yet you always want to know. And this is one of the cool common themes that we've heard about John over you know, the past few days from podcasts and everything is like how much he always asks people about their lives. And, you know, up until, um, you know, a few weeks ago, we, we talked on the phone and I was back home in Kentucky and we talked to him, he texts me and he's like, Hey, can we talk tomorrow morning? I'm like, no, I can talk right now. It's midnight Eastern time. And we hop on the phone. I, I walk out to my car. I set my car and we talk for a good couple hours. And, you know, at that point, chemo had stopped. Um, yeah. All of that. And uh, it stopped being effective. Yeah, yeah. And he, you know, he just, he wanted to know about my life. He wanted to know. And that that's how we, we, you know, I, I took that, um, you know, Melissa had been doing so many updates um, just her she's one of the strongest people i don't know her that well um but she's one of the strongest people that yes. i've ever heard of uh met um how john would always talk about her but uh you know we established early on he's like i, I need everybody i talk to talks about my cancer <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just want to talk about other stuff and you know i would go pick him up from chemo um 
take him home or take him to get a smoothie and we would just instantly talk Mavs, our latest trade trade machine stuff. Did he always yeah. ask you what's your hot take? Sometimes anytime yeah. we would we would he's like, What's your draft hot take? What's your he always was like looking for like the thing to just get it started and <laughs> Oh, I love I love that question from him. And like I knew when I when I would like him, I was like, anytime I would go meet with him, I'd be like, oh, I gotta think of a hot take because I know he's just gonna ask me. I know he's gonna be like, what's your draft hot take? What's your hot take about? I I just enjoyed that time, you know, with him so much of talking basketball. You know, there's not there's just not too many people in the world. Um, you know, when you find people in the world that are awesome people, but they also have like the same passions as you, yeah. it's not very, you know, and like my two biggest passions in my life is you either, the gospel. You, you either marry them or do a podcast with them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but, or both. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you, we got we to pick up the kid. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's, you know, we bonded over our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ and our love for basketball and it's like it's very hard and like you knew some pop culture stuff too and it's like these are like three areas like two big areas in my life that i'm the biggest passion most passionate about um but you know that first if i could tell a story that i'll never forget um so john we're john and i were talking on the phone back last spring and i'm in the parking lot of a restaurant and he's telling me um, he's back in the hospital and he'd been in the hospital a few times. He didn't know what was going on. He thought it was COVID after effects and stuff. And he just didn't know what was going on. He was in this overflow of the ER of the hospital. And we talked for so long about basketball, the draft coming up because it was the spring. And um, I was like, Hey, just, you know, keep me updated. Like, and in that conversation, he's asked me about family, new job. I just started new church here in Dallas and stuff. And, um, just the classic John's like, I want to hear about you. Tell me about how are you and your dad? How, you know, I'll never forget complaining about like something about my job, like something stupid. We were at a pluckers one time and I just was complaining about my job. And then I look over at him and I, like, he doesn't have, he didn't have his eyebrows. Like, and I just remembered like, Oh my God, this guy's like going, to, how am I complaining about what I'm going through? Like it will, that always will, will uh, come back to me. Yeah. So we, um, <laughs> I tell him to keep me updated and, you know, it's a few days later, I'm, I'm playing basketball one morning and I go and check my phone in between games and there's that a text from him and it's just, I have cancer. Um, I'll never forget the spot I was at when I read it. Um, and I remember texting him, I, you know, I didn't know what to call. I didn't know what to do. Um, that was on a Tuesday morning and I went up the next morning, Wednesday, um, to the cancer hospital in downtown Dallas and um room 517 man like i wrote 517 on my hand every day for weeks after that and we had some of the toughest conversations and here i am you know i'm i'm a pastor um i went to school for this to to learn you know hear about faith and and for us to just walk through some of the stuff and these big questions on life. And, um, and, you know, he had a little basketball goal in his room and I brought him a, the Dirk bobblehead and, uh, um, he had different books, basketball books. He, uh, was reading and stuff and we're in there, we're in there by ourselves. And this, this guy walks in and, uh, at the cancer hospital, they, they send musicians around, uh, they kind of rotate different types of musicians and he walks in he's like hey can i can i play the piano for you and uh, john's like yeah yeah and this dude rolls in like straight up rolls in a massive piano and um and i'm like okay what's a, what's this dude about to play like and uh john's like hey do you know hymns do you know any hymns and he's like yeah yeah i do and um it's one of those moments i'll just never forget the rest of my life um you know, it was a good 10 to 15 minutes, just us sitting in silence and this guy playing uh, his hymns and singing it as well uh, with my soul. And it's just one of those moments, man. And we cry that day and pray with him. And we, and I left and I just remember sitting in my car, just crying. And um, it's like, what the crap is going on? Like, 
my my friend meter i'm an introvert naturally my my friend pastoral ever meter inside of me was like out my cup was and i was like and i just will never forget that and that you know that obviously started a journey uh, for him of figuring out what the next year was going to look like um and, you know, he has so many friends in his life that are closer with him, uh, that have been with him for years. I've only known, had the honor of knowing him for the past, you know, six years. Um, but man, he changed my life. Like he changed my life for how much he cared about people, like genuinely cared about people, he invested into people. And he wanted to know about you. And that if there's one thing that like, you're listening to this saying, man, I, I came to listen to Mavs today. All right. And you're like, y'all are sharing your story. Y'all, it, one, I don't care if you're getting mad about this pod, but two, if you're, if you're trying to find a takeaway, actually invest in somebody in your life, like know about them, like know about their life, not just the generic crap of like, Hey, how's your day going? And then you're nearly not even like listening whenever they're telling you how your how their day is going. And I meant like actually, oh, hey, so what's your wife's name again? Okay, cool. And then next time you, you're seeing, you're talking to them, it's like you're asking about their wife, their kids, their friends, the thing that's going on in their life, their job. Like that's the crap that matters in life. And he showed that. He showed what it meant to like, oh, you care. Like you you really care. You're not just small talk crap. Like you really really do care. And man, he showed that. And it, it just he was always on my back too about like finding a community group and it's like, "Hey, where's you, where you going to find community? Like you got to do life with it." He believed so much. It's like I, I was just telling <laughs> Yeah, well, I was just telling somebody about this day. I'm like, John believes so much in the power of doing life with other people yeah. and the impact of that. If, you, if you're not even a religious person, just take that out of it for a second. Yeah. Just say the impact of doing life, like actually doing, I know it's a cliche saying, but having people close to you in your life that can help you grow, that can help keep you accountable, that can help you just be in these times, in these valley times and in the mountain, in the valley times to help pick you up and in the mountaintop times to keep you humble. That like you, you got to have some people in your life that you're doing, like, like we're not meant to do life alone and in isolation. And I mean, trust me, I, I want to be by myself all the time, but that's not the healthiest version of myself. And John always pushed that, always encouraged, always asked, have you found a community yet? Have you found like people that you're doing life with all the time Same. and not just all these like random friends in your life? <laughs> and I'll just, I'll, I'll forever carry that with me. And there are probably friends in your life. I, when, I, when I saw, when I saw the news, I reached out to like three or four friends. I was like, Hey, when can we hang out? Because you just never know. I wish I had hung out with sharks a little bit more. Um, you know, cause you just never, it's, it's the the thing we say, you know, when somebody dies, it's like you oh, keep the you keep the people close to you, close to you, right? It's that community. It's yeah. you have some. There's some. There's people in your life, like continue to invest in them, continue to you know spend time with them because you never know when it'll be, like the last day. Um, I'm gonna go this direction. I didn't. I don't think that you thought that I was gonna go in this direction, but something in reading what Charks said, and he he write he wrote like a an article like back in March of like this year or was it the year before um, just everything he was Which going one? through. Bill Simmons tweeted it out. Um, yes. Long night the other day. Yeah. 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 Or the, will you know my son? Cause both of them get me like choked up. Either one. Head. Yeah. Either, either one, either thing that he wrote. Um, there's something about having, um, and this is not from, this is not from locked on this. I am the NBA channel manager of Locked On. This is not. Uh, do I need to say it? From, <laughs> no. <laughs> there's something about having an eternal assurance in your religion or in you know what you believe that allows you to live life and and figure out situations like this. Now he didn't he didn't have it figured out perfectly. No one has. No one will yeah. figure out what he was going through at all or be able to figure it out. But having something to look towards. Um, you know, my the verse that is been in my you know my life forever from the bible is uh hebrews 12 where it talks about fixing your eyes on on jesus it gives you something mm -hmm. to look towards it gives you something to um put your hope in and to not have to just rely on yourself to try and figure things out and on yourself to okay well what is my you know what is my life well your life is meant to to live for something and that's what has given meaning to my life has given me confidence in my life that has erased a lot of fear in my life 
Uh, and I know for Isaac, it has too. And, uh, and I just want to encourage you to find something like that. There's probably been something in your life that's been reaching out. It doesn't have, you know, for you, like it doesn't have to be Christianity necessarily. You can figure it out, whatever it is for you. Um, and if you have questions or if you have thoughts, reach out to me and Isaac. This is this is always something we've wanted to be about is, you know, mental health, things that we're working through and, you know, we're we're open about our faith. Uh, you can reach out to us on Twitter, on, you know, wherever you wherever you find us, <laughs> I guess. Um, but we're willing to talk to you. I've talked to listeners throughout the years that have been struggling with things or had questions or been in a certain spot where you just feel hopeless. Um, and John was in a position to feel hopeless. And I don't know if he ever felt completely hopeless. You were, you were closer to him than I was in the, in those moments. But I don't know if that, he, that every time I talked to him, it didn't seem like he was ever completely hopeless. And that's because he had something to fix his eyes on, to look to look towards. Um, and it's something that he held really deeply. And that this is where the bringing people in, caring about people, the love that he felt for other people, that's where it came from, uh, was from his religion and, and from, you know, Jesus, like just to be straight up and, and honest. Um, and that's what gave him hope. And that's what gave him uh, love in his life. That's that's where he took that from. And uh, and Isaac and I do as well. And we attest to that. And uh, and yeah, that's that's something that I will always take from from John, too. Yeah, he uh, yeah, in the hospital that day, uh, he said a line. And guys, if y'all waiting for me to uh, cuss on this pod, here you go. Uh, he said a line, you know, to me in the hospital. It's like in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all the news that he just got, he's in the cancer hospital. And he's like, man, I don't have shit without God. And it's like, the dude is like, like sitting here crediting, like I'm, I'm sitting here like, bro, I'm not even in your spot. And I'm, I'm a pastor saying, God, why? Like, why is this happening? Like we're around the same age. Our sons are around the same age. We're like, we taught like when our sons were born, we talk about it. It's like, Oh my gosh, Jackson wrote like all this. And it's like, why am I sitting here in a freaking hospital, man? Like talking about like, if it doesn't make sense, it, it, it doesn't, but we have to cling to that faith into that belief in this God that we believe in. And he did. And he, he did throughout the whole process. And that's where he used that platform of, going i mean he published an article on the ringer about his faith <laughs> you know like yeah. he's on bill simmons podcast talking about his faith he's doing all these different interviews i feel like i'm seeing more interviews pop up now that i didn't know he was on and like different podcast shows my wife sent me one the other day i'm like i didn't even know he was on this one at all either and talking about his faith and it's like Bro, he has impacted the kingdom, something that he was passionate about. And that's what I wrote down. I was like, he he chased after his passions. That when when it was all said and done for John, the things he loved, he did. And it's like, man, I want, I want that feeling when my time's up. I want that feeling, know that I love my wife well. I love my son well. I want. My, I want people to know that I chased my passion. He, he loved the sport of basketball. He was just in Vegas with his wife, uh, you know, a few months ago, going to summer league. He loved writing. He worked up until he couldn't work anymore doing podcasts. And it wasn't like the ringer was so well, like good to him yeah. of like work schedule. And, and like he worked when he could and he, cause he wanted to do it. He was passionate about his faith and he shared it on the biggest stages that he had. Like these were his passions and he pursued that. And I will forever be grateful of that and love that about him. And I hope that I can do that in, in my life that I, that I said at the end of my road or in, that other people around me could say, Isaac chased his passions and he, he, he went after them with everything he had, you know, inside of him. And I, I go back to a, I was in the parking lot of a Chipotle a, a while back. It was, back in the spring because we were debating on Tari Eason and who was, who was higher on him because John loved Eason. I loved Eason. And he asked me this question and I wrote it down on my phone and I look at it all the time. He said, what, if you were me, what would, what would, 
what would you want to tell your son like in the future and he's like you don't have to tell me the answer now he's like you can get back to me and i was like let me get back to you but (laughs) um and you know what i told him i was like i would want to know if i'm jackson i would want to know how much you love my mom i would want to know that i was like i i want to i would want to hear the love story between my parents because my parents are divorced it wrecked my life i still deal with it to this day but john loves melissa so well and reading her words in a caring bridge and all of that i I want him to know that and i i was like that's what that's what i would and you know him writing of will my son know you uh that you know that whole story right you know go read that i don't even want to paraphrase that story he wrote, he wrote for the ringer um that's what i want to tell jackson as he gets older man like that's what i want to tell him of man i loved you i loved your dad i loved your dad as a basketball writer i loved sharing skittles with him in the press box <laughs> i love debating you know draft prospects and rick carlisle's dumb decisions and <laughs> you know, Luca and all these maps. I love watching the 2021 playoffs against the Clippers. It's one of my favorite basketball memories ever in my entire life because we weren't set, supposed to like really set together because of COVID and all this stuff in the media and the arena just got to you know, like came back in. They were hosting three home playoff games. That's when they went up 2-0 in LA. They came back, even though the Mavs didn't even win a game at home in that series and they lost it in seven games. Charks, John and I set together all three of those home games, and it was some of the most fun experiences I've ever had in an arena. Us looking at each other, I could see him right now to my left, and like us looking at each other, and we're like laughing, and we're trying to talk to each other, but we can't because the arena is so loud in game three. We're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Down to the us staying after the final buzzer, and it's like me, him, and Bobby, like, why did Rick do this? Why did what is it? And it's like we're sitting there, like, arguing about the game and like what happened. All of those memories, I will never forget all, all of those memories. I'll never forget all the things he's passionate about. But I want to tell Jackson how much he loved his mom and how much John just loved being married to her and just how passionate he was about him and being his dad and that seeing him talk about a a draft prospect was one thing, but him talking about Jackson was a whole different (laughs) ball game. And it, it was, it was so cool to get him talking about raising a toddler in the different stages of that man. And I miss that guy, man. I, I miss our texts. I miss those conversations. I miss the random Mavs questions and in the middle of a random game that I don't even know if John's watching some away game and he's just like, so what do you think about this play? That I'm like, bro, I know I saw that hold too. Like, what is it? <laughs> I just, um, it's not gonna be same covering the Mavs without him, man. No. It's just, it, it's just not. I'll miss his binoculars in the press box. My guy brought binoculars every time. I'd legit. I was like, I might just like buy binoculars and just set them up there. It's like, y'all, nobody touches these binoculars. Like, this is John's binoculars. They got to stay in the press box. Um, I just miss that guy, man. He's just such a smart dude and such a good dude. Um, I don't know how this podcast is going to be for people who are listeners, but this is basically just <laughs> say, this is us. Counseling. Like this, this is us. This is just this... a counseling session for, for Nick and myself to just talk to each other, and we just recorded it. So. Uh, <laughs> But it matters because he covered the Mavs and he lived in Dallas and he was, you know, he'd been on the what show. What are other before. pods doing? Like, I didn't, I haven't even listened to pods the past days. Like, I haven't either. I just, I don't know. I'll, t- I'll tell you when I, when, when you called me, when, when I found out that he, that John had passed, I was at a concert with my wife and uh, her brother, my brother in law, and <laughs> the killers were about to play. <laughs> And uh, you call you called me, and it was between acts, and I just sat there, and like now I hear this this news, and I have to process all of it while this band this band is playing. It was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever been in. Uh, and they play this song. This is really cheesy. They play this song. Um, when you were young, 
the killers they had that song that goes he doesn't look a thing like jesus buddy they have a ton of like religious themes in all their in all their music and uh, killers the killers yeah interesting and uh, so they have that song. It doesn't look a thing like Jesus, but he talks like a gentleman. Blah blah. Talking about it's all about how like this this young girl like thought that she was supposed to go after this guy. Like she was supposed to find a partner that was like exactly like Jesus. And like you, when you grow up in the church, you're like told there's this perfect person for you out there, and then you, you get disappointed because you know mm. they're they're not. But you find somebody that's like c- kind of like that, but you know that yeah. that, that appeals. I don't to you believe in, in the one either. That but. appeals to you in a different way. I know it, that's just the, the point of the song, but. I started I started listening to it and it's like like uh it started started to make me think like about how we're supposed to look like you know we're supposed to to be the best person that we're supposed to be and we're supposed to to reach out to others to love others and John was doing that the best he could right like he doesn't you know it doesn't exactly he's not exactly like Jesus he was doing everything that he he knew to do and everything that he he's loving the, the best way that he could uh, with all that said, and so I'm listening to this song being played. I'm trying to process all this, and uh, it just came f- flooding back to me. And his memory is going to live forever in, in a lot of these things. The interviews, like you said, the writings that he did, um, and uh, and through his family. And so now, you know, they move on, and it's a uh, man, an insane thing to think about that someone could be here and then gone, just like in a, you know, that's like our age <laughs> with this. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to end this. I didn't really know how to start this when we just <laughs> we just kind of did. But this is this is our you know remembering of Jonathan Charks. This is our uh, memories of him, and uh, yeah, he's uh you know we love him. I don't know how to end it either. Um, if you plan on going um, on Friday, yeah, to celebration of life, um, you know, Melissa tweeted out uh from john's twitter account um the carrying bridge from that and some of the details of that and i can't you know push that enough um there's one thing to hear about uh john and his life and his impact uh, just on us two normal average joes here um but go go read the carrying bridge stuff and hear melissa talk about john and it, it's really um inspiring and um heartfelt and just everything i just the season she's walking uh, into there's also a gofundme um set up that a lot of people's been you know tweeting out and stuff um kirk tweeted it out a bunch of people you know tweeted it out and that um all benefits uh, all the stuff's going towards the charks family and yeah just go read some of john's pieces man and like hear um hear what he had to say in these last over this last year and it's like you know you um to get biblical for a second um I was say, we've already done we've already, we've already gotten <laughs> in biblical enough <laughs> you know back um last easter um i i used john um john's story for part of a message i did for um if you are in the liturgical Christian calendar, there's a Maundy Thursday um, and before uh, Easter. And you're basically looking at Jesus's last moments, um, last days and stuff before um, the cross. And, you know, I, I think there's something telling of what people do in their last moments of what they want to spend their time and their energy speaking on um doing and how much that matters to them and the impact of that um jesus washing the disciples feet on that thursday and showing an act of service on one of his last few days i think shows an importance of jesus saying man i want to show like serving matters serving people matters in this world and for john Look at what John did over the past year and say, man, what mattered to John? Like, and seeing all those things, seeing him 
talk about his faith, seeing him love his family so well and see what all they did like over the past year and looking at some of that caring bridge stuff, they went to Breckenridge and skied. And he's like, dude, I've always wanted to ski in my life. And I remember him telling me like the doctor's like, Hey, this thing ain't the best thing for you is to go skiing. <laughs> and John went freaking skiing. All right. <laughs> him and his family went, you know, went skiing him going to those playoff games in 2021. That was like coming out, like oh, COVID stuff and all of that. And it's like, he wasn't supposed to be there. But John's like, I want to do this. I want to live my life, man. Yeah. Like, I want to do what matters the most to me. And if there's anything from that, it's like, live your life. Like, do, like do what matters. Be be passionate. Like, chase your passions. Do if you've been putting off something to chase something, like, do it. Like, go after it. Like, take the risk. Take the chances. And John did that whenever he knew that his time was probably coming to an end. And he still, and he chased his passions and he did what he wanted to do. And he wanted to do these things that meant the most to him. And I guess that that's my question. And anybody listens, like what, ask yourself, what matters the most to you? What relationships yeah. matter the most to you? What's, what passions mean? The, are you the most passionate about? What, what is that for you? And are you chasing it? Like, are you spending the time with it? Those relationships, those passions, are you doing like, life's too short, man. Like go after those things, chase them. John did it. So that means we can do it. I'm done. Sorry. Why did you just apologize for that? I just, I don't know. Dude, should I get the guitar out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. I'm done. All right. John, love you, bro. Uh, Forever into the pod. Honestly, reach out to us. I will respond to DMS. I will respond on Twitter. Um, yeah, if you're in a if you're in a place where you you know you have questions or if you need someone to talk to, we're here. All right, peace out. Boom.